Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for attending today's Netgear webinar on Wi-Fi monetization, how to make money with Wi-Fi, part of the Netgear sales and technical webinar series. My name is Pam Drayton, and I will be your host for today's webinar. At this time, I would like to introduce our speakers for this session, Thomas Chang, Senior Product Line Manager for Wireless at Netgear, and Gagandeep Singh, CEO of Ragapa. Please go ahead, Thomas. Hello, everyone. Great opportunity to speak with you again, and uh, I'm very happy to uh, co-present today's presentation with Gagandi. In today's session, we'll go through some of the new technology, as well as sharing with you, as the title said, how to make Wi-Fi, how to make money with Wi-Fi. I know that we have many partners as well as the end users on the call today, and uh, welcome to the call today. On this slide, you can see these portrays what are the Wi-Fi evolution, in particular in hospitality. I think many of us know, remember the days of early 2000, where when you go to a hospitality hotel and a small, small, small medium-sized hotel, and to get on Wi-Fi, typically you get these old uh, piece of paper that says, in order to log in Wi-Fi, uh, put in this passcode, and then um, you get some period of time to use the Wi-Fi. And at that time, it was pretty acceptable. People are willing to pay for some money to use the Wi-Fi for a period of time. Um, however, as you can see, during the last five years, 2010 to 2015, the concept of free Wi-Fi popped up everywhere. Uh, pretty much every hotel that you join, that you, that you stay, you can see that uh, first thing you do is you want to see if they have good Wi-Fi and you want to see if they have free Wi-Fi. And part of that, you realize that free Wi-Fi became part of the most important things for hotels. However, some of the challenge that poses is really for hotel owners, which many of the, you guys call upon on a day-to-day -day basis, realize they, they start feeling that providing Wi-Fi as an infrastructure becomes a cost center. Uh, because they're providing Wi-Fi for free, some of them, they may not see the immediate benefit of earning money with Wi-Fi. Yes, you know, a lot of people talk about that customer satisfaction is important and having a good Wi-Fi uh, allows a hotel, allows a guest to stay longer, allows them to come back to stay in the same hotel. Uh, many of them realize that, and I know many of you guys are also um, uh, using that as one of the sales motion to get your customer to uh, uh, buy the Wi-Fi infrastructure uh, as well as a wire infrastructure to support this type of uh, initiative. However, um, going forward, uh, there's really a great way you can actually sell Wi-Fi infrastructure and share that information with your end customer that um, the end customer can actually make money by deploying Wi-Fi. And that's really the concept we, we talk, uh, we're going to talk about today called Wi-Fi monetization. Um, Netgear provides one of the most reliable infrastructure in the industry today. We provide a very cost-effective solution for both on the wire and wireless side. Uh, we partner here with Ragapa that give you the capability of not just providing the basic plumbing, to give the customer a reliable connection, but now we can use a joint solution between Netgear and Ragapa to give you the capability to help you sell infrastructure a lot easier, as well as bring maximum customer satisfaction for your customer. And the concept of Ragapa and Netgear will give you a total solution to enable you to give a solution to the customer, and you can share with them that now they don't have to provide free Wi-Fi, but they can really make money using Wi-Fi. So I hope in today's session you can learn a lot and then um, uh, definitely uh, keep um, your thoughts as we go through this presentation. If you have any questions, send it through the chat and we'll answer them as we go along. So with that, I want to introduce my partner, Gangandeep, to give you a little bit more information about this joint solution. Gangandeep? All right. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you guys for joining in today. Um, so before I talk about our solution, I want to quickly go over a quick overview of what we do here at Ragupa. We're pioneers in Wi-Fi monetization space. Uh, with our proprietary content insertion technology, we have monetized thousands of locations so far. And, and many owners have been able to recoup not only their Wi-Fi infrastructure costs with our solution, but also generate a recurring revenue stream on an ongoing basis. Uh, moving forward to the next level, our captive access solution, we call it captive access because with this solution, we're trying to engage the user end-to-end, -end, captivate the user experience end-to-end. -end. 
Uh, what we did was we bundled all the essential Wi-Fi features into a single platform, uh, which we call the Captive Access. In this solution, you will see a smart captive portal with social login and other features. Uh, I'll tell you why we call it the smart captive portal as well. Our core technology, the monetization through content insertion, which is also packaged into this bundle. A web security for content filtering, which is uh, pretty essential for public facing enterprises these days. And, and then obviously the deep user analytics. This solution works as a gateway, which sits in the user traffic. So we are able to collect a lot of useful information and share it through our cloud-based campaign, uh, through our cloud-based dashboard, basically. And all the features are managed and configured through our dashboard in real time. So that's the overall of how the captive access looks like right out of the box. Um, now let me talk about the captive portal options. The captive portal uh, is a standard captive. It's a standard captive portal with, uh, where you could uh, basically do uh, a background image update, a logo update, put some essential information about your uh, wireless network on the main pages. It's completely responsive to whatever device you use. We have different social login options, which would include the Facebook, the Google, LinkedIn, or even the form login. Now, what we also added was a monetization uh, as part of the captive portal solution where you could push in videos or display ads in real time to the connected users. Um, we call it smart captive portal because not only the information that we collect here is used as analytics, it could also be used in real time to, uh, to basically communicate back with the user using our in-session content insertion technology. And with that, let me talk about the content insertion. So actually, um, Gangani, this is really interesting. So you're saying that the venue, like a hotel owner, uh -huh. they can actually put in their own images and then you can actually automatically link this with their social media. Why, why is that useful? So this is definitely useful. One is when, when the user is using a social media login using the venue, you're able to collect a lot of information about the user directly, right? I mean, you're basically getting their age group, they're getting, you're getting their email addresses, which is very essential for smaller venues to basically get back to the users. You're getting their uh, gender and all the other information. And then you can link all that information with their user profile, right? So you could basically build profiles of users and say, hey, this guy has been browsing these sites and then build that kind of a, you know, a, a user profile and target them well, basically. Wow, yeah. that's good. So that means, like for example, if you have a guest to a hotel, he can come in and you can actually find out a little bit more information about what his preferences. Exactly. Later on, you can send him specific uh, advertising or like bonuses or coupons uh, specific for that user. Absolutely, and not just that, not just later on. Here's the key from th that differentiates us from any other solution in the market is our content insertion technology. It actually happens in real time. So you're able to collect that information and then you can target the user in session. So what in-browser engagement solution, the way it works is, you walk into a venue, you connect to a Wi-Fi, you see a captive portal page. Once you go beyond the captive portal page, typically all solutions end there, right? Our solution actually starts engaging user from that point on. We're able to push content in real time to the connected user. Now that happens through content injection. Uh, it, you could be on any device, any browser, any screen size, without having to download anything on your device, you can push app, download, app onboarding experiences, you can push advertisements, through third-party uh, you know, ad networks. You can push social media engagements or coupons, daily deals, videos. Everything is 100% you know, controlled through our campaign manager. You know, that, that's the value that we bring in with our uh, you know, content insertion technology. The best part, like I said, uh, the user is not installing anything on the device. They're there, they get targeted. Once they disconnect, it's completely gone. No residual software or anything left on the user device. Um, here's a quick example how it looks like, right? So if you look at my screen right now, uh, we have a desktop, like I said, it's completely responsive to any of the screen size, any of the devices out there. You could push in interactive icons that can help you onboarding experiences, or you could push in ad network videos or banners, or you could collect information that you collected on your captive portal and target the user in session, right? So suppose you collected their information, their preferences of what they like and what they don't like in your venue, and then you're able to do things like that. Now I'll talk about a use case also where you're collecting the user feedback in real time and then using that to lower the complaints of you know, one of our venues that we uh, hosted our solution in. I see, so I see that this is really good because um, the banner comes on the bottom of this uh, image mm -hmm. and it, it's not really obstructing the entire session. So this way the user doesn't really get annoyed at the same time the hotel owner can, can, can continue pushing additional advertisement without 
interrupting the user. I really like the way you guys set that up. That, that's absolutely the right thing. Uh, Thomas, what happens is not only you're able to push this, you actually control all the frequencies. Mm -hmm. You can say if a user hits the close button, never show it again. You can say if he goes to another page, pop it up again. Or you could say, hey, pop up a video once in the entire user session or every 15 minutes for that matter. So you as a venue owner has full control over things. We have certain guidelines. We have thousands of customers that have used the solution. So we have certain guidelines that we can provide to our end users to help them do the right engagement. But, but it's up to you on how you want to engage with your end customers, basically. I see. So I, also, I like this app onboarding feature you have on the right. I know a lot of our uh, partners uh, set up wireless infrastructure for trade shows. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of time you go to a trade show and you want to capture the user experience, the user information. And uh, recently I attended a trade show where they say, when you come to this trade show, download this app. Mm -hmm. um, because you can know, for example, the floor plan, you know, where some of the key displays are. But one of the challenges I see all the time is that when you try to find a particular app on the app store, there's like hundreds of thousands yeah. of apps. There's no way you can find the right app. So maybe you can tell our audience a little bit about this app onboarding capability you guys Absolutely. have here. Absolutely. You nailed it right there, Thomas. So, so this definitely is a one-touch convenience feature. So, so you walk into a venue, you're, you know, most of the time you can't even find the app that you're looking for, right? In this case, you have one click button for whatever operating system you're on and go to the app store and download the app right away. Our perfect example, we just did a recent press release was Cedar Fair. Uh, it's one of the largest amusement park company in the US that has, you know, Knott's Berry Farm and all these, uh, you know, Great America and all these parks. And then app onboarding was one of their concerns also. With our solution, they're able to have better app onboarding experience for the connected Wi-Fi users. And not all that, we actually collect all this analytics. So how many people clicked on these links? How many people got engaged with these banners? How many people went to those websites and did something? All that information makes you do even better in terms of, you know, targeting that user better or your, your campaign, tweaking your campaigns better. So, so the analytics behind all this is also a key component with the content insertion uh, solution that we have here. Um, now with that, let me move to our next topic, which is uh, content filtering. So, so guys, if you look at it, what we have done here is essentially put everything, every important uh, feature that you need in a public Wi-Fi together under a single hood, right? I mean, this is one solution where you have five of the most used features than 500 features that people don't even know, right, or don't even use it. Um, you know, any public Wi-Fi, you and I both know, Thomas, uh, having uh, blocked some of the explicit content is one of the key things, right? I mean, the right. kids around, their you know, families yeah. around and all that stuff. So with this content filtering, right out of the box, you could have, you know, so you have 75 categories that you can block from, like porn or hacking or music or movies or whatever. You could do URL-based filtering. Uh, you could do domain-level filtering. So you could say, hey, you know what? It seems like a lot of people are using YouTube or Netflix on my network. I want to block that because, you know, I want to have, you know, better user experience, a bandwidth should not be housed by a few users. And then whitelisting, right? Basically, if you have certain, uh, you know, um, uh, certain websites that are blocked by a category, you can whitelist that. So that's another feature that comes right out of the box. Mm -hmm. and, and you would see, uh, some of you and I shared some articles on how McDonald's and Starbucks, they are moving towards blocking some of this content. So, so with, with captive access, it's a one-stop shop. You know, you don't have multiple hardware for like four different vendors that you're using, one for content insertion, one for content filtering, one for captive portal. It's all combined right out of the box in your, you know, uh, premise and, and it works like a charm, basically. Yeah, so I see this a great opportunity for a lot of partners that are uh, looking to deploy solution for um, uh, coffee shops, mm -hmm. you know, like, um, mm -hmm. you know, mom and pop coffee shops yep. or bed and bed and breakfast uh, deployments were uh, getting free Wi-Fi is awesome in the past, but now we want to try to be a little bit more engaged with the customer mm -hmm. as well as providing with the security. Uh, now, next year, previously we provide a hardware solution for security. So for those of partners and end customers who prefer a cloud-based security solution without any extra hardware, this sounds like a good solution. Absolutely, for absolutely. And like I said, you know, you don't have to have multiple hardware in place to, to offer this kind of solution. It's all bundled into a single platform, which is cloud managed, right? Uh, so that's another one of the key uh, components that we have uh, from our captive access solution. Now, let me briefly talk about how it's all managed, right? I mean, this is a key, right? I mean, you don't have to be within that network to manage all, you know, the, all the features. I mean, it's a completely unified management dashboard that is hosted on our cloud. Uh, we just give you a VM you deploy, or we give you a pie based solution that you deploy for a smaller mom pop shop. Uh, from their single dashboard, you have full analytics view of all your locations. You can push marketing, 
uh, or, or in browser content insertion in real time to any of your locations. So you could be sitting in India and pushing content in your locations in the US, right? So it's as simple as that. Uh, you could be blocking categories or whatever you want. And then one of the key things is user management, right? This is where you create the workflow, right? What all steps the user has to do before he goes onto the internet? Uh, what is the bandwidth per user gonna be like? Uh, what, what kind of controls you wanna give to the user in terms of social login and all that? So everything is completely 100% controlled in real time through our cloud-based dashboard, which essentially becomes a pretty interesting component as well. Um, okay, great. So this sounds like what you're saying, that management is done at the cloud. Um, so for a lot of our partners here that are familiar with Business Central, that's exactly what we do as well. So Business Central gives you a capability of uh, managing uh, multiple wireless infrastructure, the access point, doesn't matter where they are, they simply log into a, a Business Central portal to do that. So this sounds like similar. Huh? Yep. You log into a different portal and you log in and, in, um, and you do all the analytics directly from there. Exactly, and, and like Thomas, you and I also discussed the fact that how it would be uh, nice to have a single sign-on from a Business Central to a RAGPA, you know, uh, devices, right? So right. you basically get into Business Central, you have access to RAGPA through a single sign-on, and you can manage everything through a single, you know, username and password, basically. So, I mean, those are the things that we're, uh, you know, combined working with a Netgear team here, and Thomas being a big supporter of RAGPA and seeing what we have deployed so far. Um, yeah. So I, I think what will be useful for, um, for Gagandeep and I is really to get some feedback from uh, the folks on the line here. So feel free to text us to uh, I am um, on the chat window below to see if you have interest in terms of a joint solution on the management piece. Obviously, a lot of you guys do a lot of business central activity, so you like the user interface. Um, so if you think there's a value for us to uh, jointly develop a solution for a single dashboard to to provide both the management piece as well as a Wi-Fi monetization piece, definitely let us know that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. and then one, one more thing that I wanted to mention is uh, the fact that the whole dashboard is very intuitive. I mean, I'm, I'm sure we don't have enough time for this presentation to show the actual dashboard. I'll show you a user experience, which Great. is probably the next slide. But, uh, you know, the dashboard itself is so intuitive mm -hmm. that you don't have to be like an IT tech to use it, you know. Great. I mean, in fact, most of the customers that we have enabled, they didn't even look at our guides. It's so intuitive that's one, two, three, four steps and you can bring everything up in, in like, you know, no time basically. Right, right. So, so that's another value add for the dashboard that we have created with Ragpa. Um, analytics, right? I mean, this is obviously one of our key components, uh, which is where, you know, you have to have all the information about the user that is connected. Now, we give you breakdowns of logins, the sessions, the devices and browser types, the sites they visited, and then, then you also get all the demographic information like the age, gender, name, emails, and you know, all that information is collected and stored in our dashboard, which you can easily download. We also keep logs for compliance uh, for three months and six months, depending on what part of the you know, uh, world that you are and what your compliance and restrictions are. Uh, but you know, this becomes a very key information, the, the, even the um, content insertion analytics such as number of clicks, the impressions, what people went to what sites and what sites were they on when they clicked on certain ads, uh, you know, that actually becomes very relevant for the end venues to target their users better. So, so that's the rich analytics that we capture throughout the, you know, Wi-Fi session of a connected user. That's good because I think the, the, the new ways of doing things is really customer engagement, understanding what customer do, understanding who they are, and that can really help are um, you know the partners and customer to really target the customer a little bit better that's good but is this hard to set it up absolutely not Thomas that's that's exactly what I was telling you I mean most of the selling that we have done okay. off Ragapa is actually through Amazon or through our website directly which actually you know happens on its own so we give them a software we're a hundred percent software company let me mention that too uh, we, we either give you a VM based solution or we give you a Pi based software which you with instructions on how to burn a micro SD and plug it into a Pi and then bring it up, right? So the whole whole uh, gist of this whole solution is to make it so easy and usable at an SMB level because, you know, obviously an SMB guy is not as sophisticated as an enterprise guy, right? And then we completely get that picture. We've done a lot of research. We've done a lot of deployments to understand their mindset and the way it workflow and the way it works best, basically. And so it basically takes no time to either, you know, go to our dashboard and enable some features or even deploy it for that matter. Great. So, so pretty straightforward. Uh, guys, I have a quick, you know, like to say a picture is a thousand words, right? I mean, I could talk about it all day and you still wouldn't get a whole picture of exactly how the solution looks like. 
But this is a user experience of a connected Wi-Fi user. So you walked into a venue, connected to a Wi-Fi, this is how it's gonna look like. So I've enabled all the features in this one, but you could have you know, options of you know, enabling social login or video or whatever. So let me play this real quick for you guys. In this demo, I will quickly show you the user experience of a connected Wi-Fi user where the captive access is deployed. So the user walks into a venue, connects to the Wi-Fi, the first thing he sees is a captive portal page. This page is fully customizable. You can put your own heading, your logo, your background image, and some information about the Wi-Fi. Once the user hits on the proceed button, he's taken to the next page where you can upload your own terms and conditions. Everything is managed and controlled through our captive access dashboard, which is cloud hosted. Next, the user lands on the authentication page. We have some options for authentication or a simple form login. So a user can simply fill out the form login and go to the next step. Once he registers and goes beyond, he'll be able to see a video or a display ad. After successfully watching the display ad, he can simply hit the proceed button and go to the landing page that you have configured for that venue. In this case, wood.com. But here's the key. Once he's beyond the captive portal page, we're also able to engage him through our content insertion technology on all the websites he visits. On top of that, we have content filtering available. So if the user tries to go on the, some of the other pages that are blocked to a category, he'll see a blocked page. So, so like you guys saw, right? I mean, it's a pretty straightforward, easy one minute demo that we wanted to show you the user experience, Thomas. Um, but it enables all the features, right? right? So yeah. you have you know, engagement going on on the captive portal page. You can customize it. Uh, going beyond, you can engage through content insertion, and on top of that, you could block certain categories, right? So it becomes a very easy one-stop shop solution that you deploy and you get everything out of it right away, right? Right, so I see most of the solution out there in the industry today has bits and pieces exactly. of these. Okay. So for example, um, some providers have a captive portal solution, mm -hmm. and then some provider adds another piece for the social media login, and then you have, um, uh, another provider who may have a hardware solution that provides the ad insertion. Exactly. And then you have another customer who may want to uh, put in the Palo Alto firewall for uh, content filtering. Yeah. So you're right. So in that sense, for a small coffee shop, now they're looking at four or five different boxes and four or five different providers. Mm -hmm. So what you're showing here is really one solution, mm -hmm. one dashboard, and a flow that um, you can actually define which one shows up first versus which one other shows up later, right? Exactly, exactly. There, there, there are two main benefits of the solution. One is because we've integrated all these pieces together, Thomas, we're able to, um, you know, we are able to share information, right? So Captive Portal gets some information, right. in session can use it and target the end user. That, that's one of the key components of targeting the end user, giving them the most relevant information in real time, right? Not collecting the email and sending them a blast later on, which obviously the solution can do also. Right. Um, but the second part is, like you said, right, combining all these four different solutions into a single package, whereby it reduces the need of buying different software, reduces the cost, different hardware, you know, reduces the cost again, Speci specifically for an SMB point of view, mm -hmm. where they're already like, you know, shot in like, you know, in, in, in funds to get a solution which has all these components, captive access becomes like a bread and butter for them, right? I mean, this is exactly the right solution for any SMB market. Yeah. Good, so how do we set this up? So let's go to the next slide. Okay, um, so um, I know a lot of you guys are probably wondering uh, this in the cloud and what are the components that come with this. Uh, Ganga did mention earlier that there's only a small hardware piece that, um, uh, that the partner yourself can supply and that's called the Wi-Fi monetization appliance. There's really two form factor that we have. Uh, the first one is Raspberry Pi and then you can purchase that off any standard uh, off-the-shelf uh, uh, supplier that you have. Mm -hmm. uh, and the bigger uh, deployment is really a VM base, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So again, you have a uh, specified uh, CPU and memory that you define the user uh, to, to deploy and yeah. then based on number of user count and the traffic. Yeah. And that's it, right? And, yeah. and you put this in line or off to the side and then that can be managed through the cloud, through your captive portal right. uh, software or the rest of the piece, as you can see here, we have access points, we have switches, that can be simply managed to a business central. That's it, right? There's really nothing else you need to do. It, it is a gateway device. You simply plug it into your network. Um, once it's in there, the traffic flows to us and we do the magic on our cloud, right? So everything is enabled on our dashboard in the, in the cloud and then you just need to set it up. Like I said, you know, the whole point of bringing up the solution was an easy setup, right? 
and then with all the instructions, with all the videos and FAQs and everything that we build around it, it becomes like a no-brainer for anybody to install it, basically. Great. So let's talk about, actually this is a, a, a use case that both of us attended there. Uh, so that was a good experience. Uh, we did a joint deployment at Best Western down in Los Angeles near to the LAX airport. In fact, um, that Best Western had one of the fastest uh, uh, internet connectivity as uh, of any place I saw. Yep. Okay, just basically because they cater to a lot of business traveler there. Uh, here, uh, maybe you can talk a little about our experience there. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So, so we went in there. Uh, the installation, like Thomas knows, it didn't take much time, right? I mean, it was right. pretty straightforward once we understood, uh, you know, what the network looked like. Uh, it was one of the fastest internet we've seen, uh, you know, around there, more than 100 megabits per second. Uh, and then, you know, there were about 100, 150 concurrent users. That kind of use the bandwidth on a regular basis. Now the features that they that we enabled there were like the authentication, the content filtering, uh, and then the content insertion, of course. Uh, now here are the benefits that this saw over the four months that we've had uh, our you know solution deployed at Best Western, right? Um, first of all, with our content insertion, they were able to collect user feedback and surveys in real time, right? I mean, basically right. what happens is exactly. when you're not very happy with the hotel experience, you go back and write a review on a TripAdvisor. It's anyway too late, right? Because everybody's reading it, it's a bad review. You have you're basically you know bandaging it at that point, right? Here you get a real time effect. You know you get the pop up that says once in the user experience, once a day, or you know once the entire stay that says, hey, you know how was your feedback? There's a screenshot right there, and you you know read that, you write some comments, and then somebody from management can you know literally take a look at it right away. This right. Even goes directly to your management at the hotel that can basically you know, take care or address this problem in real time. So right? you don't want this bad review to get onto tra to Travelocity or Expedia and because that really hurts your business. Exactly, right? exactly. So this definitely solved their you know, complaints or, or you know, better experience. Not, not just the complaints, they yeah. have a better, better experience, right? The other thing what they used for was the in-house promotions on landing page, on Captive Portal, even in session, right? Which definitely resulted in higher revenue, right? So they were pushing their own daily deals, returning customers were getting some other deals and all that stuff, right? Um, apart from that, you know, analytics played a pretty big role. They were not having a lot of visibility within their own network. They didn't know how what how many people opt on, what devices they were using, what screens, that, what I mean, uh, what what browsers they were on, and you know, all those analytics became pretty critical for them. So they had some idea of what kind of user browsing pattern are there, like when is the peak at night or when is the lowest usage during the day. Uh, so that that was a pretty good insight for the for the venue itself. But here's another key component: the bandwidth throttling piece, right? So because they have 100 megabits of you know uh, uh, you know bandwidth, the one person could literally right. hog this, right? I mean, this this is what the bad experience would. Even with 100 megabits, you could end up having a bad experience because you know some few people could be watching HD movies and bring down the whole uh, internet, right? With our solution, we capped everybody at 25 megabits, so you couldn't at any point go over 25 megabits per second, right? So that was an additional you know value add that resulted in network stability, better user experience. And then, you know, these were all the benefits, again, coming out of a single box, right? right. So they actually replaced a couple of boxes. You remember yep. they had a couple of different boxes right. that yep. they replaced and put us in, right. and, and they were able to enjoy all these features, right? Yeah, so this was really a good experience. Uh, I mean, the installation took a couple of hours, yes. and then we stayed uh, later on to just monitor the activities. One, one thing that um, the general manager thought was really a good idea was really a concept of this in-house promotion, because I think all of you guys are – uh, have customers where you talk in the hotel and every hotel have their own restaurant or even the nearby restaurants. And the way that uh, the, the the hotel owner, what they can do is they can provide some type of coupon mm -hmm. as part of these captive portal uh, ad insertion exactly. that, for example, a special deal for happy hours or maybe a partnership with the local restaurant. So that way, um, you help the guests to have a better engagement. At the same time, you can keep the customer in your in your hotel to buy additional stuff. Absolutely. So again, this is a, how the you know how a partner of Netgear can help our end customer make more money through this platform. Absolutely, and then this perfectly sets it up for the next slide that I was going to talk about, which is how does the monetization actually happen, right? I mean, the the end venue, um, Best Western, or any of our other customers, and they they have multiple choices, right? I mean, they do they can do a content a content insertion with ad networks, make money. They can do special promotions of their in-house services, or they can even do local daily deals, right? I mean, Best Western has a lot of ancillary businesses around them, and they can, you know, basically give them some, you know, restaurant, you know, deals or some theater deals and all that right. stuff, and, and make money, uh, you know, indirectly. Now, how does that help uh, Netgear 
a reseller, right? I mean, obviously, if a venue can recoup the cost using our solution on a year-over-year -year basis and generate a recurring revenue stream for themselves, I mean, they're going to opt this solution every year. Because they're going to do it every year-over-year, year, this is going to be a good, you know, a revenue for the Netgear bar or reseller who actually brought that deal to us, right? So, so that's the value that we can bring in with our solution that pays for itself. And then I think this sets up perfectly for our next slide where, uh, you know, Thomas, you can talk about a particular location, what kind of infrastructure is sure. best, best in case for that matter. Sure. Right? So one of the challenges I hear a lot uh, from partners is that when you engage your customer, you know, customer doesn't have, um, you know, unlimited budget. Yeah. And a lot of time it's hard for us to convince the customer that Wi-Fi is not a cost center anymore. Wi-Fi is a way to make money. Mm -hmm. um, so rather than always trying to uh, talk about price, one of the ways you can do is really look at this financial analysis for payback period. Uh, as Gagandi mentioned earlier in the previous slide, now the Wi-Fi is free. In fact, you can actually make money with Wi-Fi after a certain period of year. Um, so here we give an example for a typical deployment for wire one wireless controller, 10 access point, and a PoE switch. And then what I show here on the lower left-hand corner is typical price of putting this network together. And plus the Wi-Fi gateway hardware, plus as well as the subscription price with Ragapod solution. Yep. What you're looking at is roughly about $6,000, $6,700 to put this network together with engagement, with the security capability, with the captive portal, with all the information we talk about today. Now, uh, $6,000, again, the customer may say, well, I don't have $6,000. So what we recommend the partners do is turn this discussion upside down and rather than talk about the money that they have to spend, just imagine on the right-hand side, the number of customers they can bring in, for example, 20 users per hour, and then let's say, assume that it's a 24-hour hotel and, and you can do your own math, and then imagine the amount of ads or the upsell opportunity. This could be advertisement, this could be coupons, this could be the customer decides to stay in the hotel to enjoy a couple of beer, to buy additional stuff from the near, near neighborhood restaurant that you can actually uh, create some relationship with them. So if you look at this in an example for monthly ads and upsell revenue of $480, you're looking at a very short 14 month pay, payback period. So after that, after 14 months, you get this $480 of monthly revenue on a recurring basis. Yep, it's still so, revenue. Okay. Exactly, so now Wi-Fi, you, you, now you, you, in fact, after 14 months, you pay all, you pay back all the revenue, and now after that, you continue to get the revenue, plus you get the great customer engagement, the great security, basically for free. Exactly, exactly. So the point is, you're getting all these features, and you're making money, right? I mean, right. typically you would spend money to get the features, right? And in this case, not just you know, spending money, you're actually making money. Um, and I want to clarify, I know a lot of people would have questions about how did $480, you know, 480 users turn in $480. Uh, typically, what we have seen with all of our networks, all of our deployments, a user a day converts to a dollar at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. If you monetize it, average. If you do it better, it can be much better. You know, some of our customers are even better than this. But on average, upselling direct or indirect, you upselling your own services or adding an ad network, uh, you could definitely do that numbers. Now, uh, the other question that we get asked also, Thomas, is who sources the ads, right? I mean, that's you know one of the questions that might pop up, right? Um, now, that question uh, really depends on the size of the opportunity, right? If you have 50 locations or 100 locations with 100 users each and it's a total of 10,000 users, we can bring ads for you. Mm -hmm. But if you have a single location and it's like 50 or 100, 200 users on a daily basis, monetization has to be done by the end user or the venue uh, themselves, right? Uh, it's only when, from a bar perspective, if they have like 50 locations, they could be scattered and they can bring all these to us and say, hey, there's, these are the 50 locations, I enabled captive access on them. Can, could you help me monetize? We would be able to do that. Okay. Great. Yeah. So, so that's something I want to throw out so people understand that we do have, Ragapa does have a relationship with ad networks. Chromatic is one of them, Credio, and most of OpenX and all these guys work with us. And, but, but the network has to be large enough for us to bring those you know, uh, networks in. But that number is easily attainable if the great. network is large enough. Great. Yeah. So we definitely can cater to both small customers as well as a large customer with multiple sites. Exactly. Okay. Absolutely. Wonderful. So let's talk about how we're going. Um, if you're interested, um, again, um, the uh, Rockapa solution today is available on Amazon Marketplace, yeah. and uh, so you can definitely uh, look for that information. And uh, it it includes the what, what does it include on the Amazon? So, so right? like like I said, right? I mean, we are a hundred percent software company. So what it include is a micro SD card, basically, with a software on it, right? If you don't want that, you would even get a you know a software download link, and then some instructions to burn it on a micro SD card, right? You just take that, buy a hardware, and we specify all the hardware what is needed. 
uh, buy the hardware from Amazon and plug it in basically. So what what happens if uh, our partners has a, a deal that you know they want to do a little bit more than what you that you can provide the standard price on Amazon. If they have, for example, a couple of sites or three or four different sites and they want to talk a little bit more to understand your solution and also to use your information to engage their customer. What type of uh, opportunity do you think you can uh, Absolutely. So, so Thomas, in those cases, if there are large enough deals or there are multiple you know, sites involved, uh, reach out at us at uh, sales at rockbar.com. Somebody in the team would help you guys. Uh, we can even put custom pricing together if you are like 50 sites or more. Uh, we can do those kind of things as well. Um, and then we can help you with sourcing of the hardware and software and everything, basically. Okay, yeah. wonderful. Again, um, uh, Neki and Ragaba has done a number of deals together already. So we have a um, uh, experience with their deployment. We also have a application notes uh, that talks about uh, the basic setup on the Neki plumbing side, the infrastructure side, as well as what type of changes, what type of configuration needs to be done right. at the um, at the Ragaba side. So again, those information are available for those of you guys interested. And uh, I think we can also provide, you know, there are case studies. You visit our website, uh, you'll see a lot of, uh, you know, different detailed data sheets, case studies, different customers, how they have used our solution, and then stuff like that that you can, uh, you know, easily uh, try to see in comparison with other solutions out in the market. I mean, this is hands down one of the industry leading solutions that has packaged everything together, and not just from the pricing perspective, but also from the perspective of, uh, you know, having a joint solution that can target the end user. Well, you know, our content insertion technology is proprietary to us, which is, you know, basically has done a lot of monetization with thousands of customers around the world. Okay, so before I before we end the call, uh, let me just go through some of the chat. We got quite a bit of questions, uh, which is awesome. So uh, thanks a lot for everybody putting the question. So here's one uh, from Randy Newman. Um, um, so maybe this one goes to you, yeah. and uh, especially with some of the experience that you have with deployment um, uh, using Rakapa in a hospitality deployment. So what are some of the recommended pricing to charge for potential advertisers, um, especially, you know, like in a tourist destination and things like that? Yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, that's a very good question, Randy. Uh, uh, so basically, you're right. It depends not only on the type of the venue, but also it depends on the geographical location of the venue. I mean, every country has their own CPM, CPC rates. We have in-house expertise. Uh, in fact, Ravinder, uh, my, my partner, he has a lot of experience in this. Uh, Randy, reach out to us uh, via info at rockbar.com or sales at rockbar.com. Tell us more about your venues, and we can help you, you know, uh, build that uh, use case also. In fact, we have Excel Sheets, which has the whole modeling where you plug in the numbers and different parts of the country and throw out numbers with what do you expect, wow, right? That's so, good. so we've done that kind of extensive, uh, you know, uh, research on this, this uh, subject actually. Okay. So feel free to reach out. I, I see another question there, which is about what is, you know, the key differentiator between our solution and something else that exists in the market. Like I said, Captive Access has two key components. One is because we have combined all these services into a single platform, all these components talk to each other, which basically means a, you know, some information that is collected on the captive order can be used in real time to engage with the user in session, right? And that in session is our core technology that nobody has, right? Uh, and obviously, again, because we're able to put everything together, we're, you know, it's much cheaper, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's pricing wise, it's much more, uh, you know, much better. It, you know, there are not much more hardware required, so it's easier to set up and, and put it in the SMB kind of a solution. Yeah, from my experience playing around with your system, uh, I mean, Ease of use is definitely there. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of other systems requires a lot of command line interfaces. Yep. Very difficult to access. And yours is really just user interface and it's pretty much straightforward. Um, great, okay. So we also have a question from, uh, I know this is Eric Gorman, who uses my account, because uh, I sent him the wrong link. Okay, um, can we use this to provide a limited bandwidth free Wi-Fi with the option to purchase a more Bandwidth connection. End user can pay more for bandwidth if free is not available. Yeah, so 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 it's so a good question, right? Uh, currently, the solution has uh, bandwidth limiting, yeah. a feature which we've enabled at Best Western. You can throttle and say uh, per user bandwidth is 10 megabits per second, and nobody can go beyond that. Uh, we do not have any feature of uh, buying or selling right now, or any payment uh, gave on the on the platform. The whole idea was ca with captive access was free Wi-Fi. Right. I mean, every, the whole world is going on the free Wi-Fi, and then we wanted to enable that. But as a as a roadmap item, we do have things like limiting users on a data basis, not just bandwidth basis, on a data basis, right. and then they'll be able to buy, you know, uh, more bandwidth or upgrade their, you know, uh, account to a next level of paid and have more, you know, uh, features enabled with interface, PayPal, and exactly, and, uh, exactly, and, and that, that's all in our roadmap. And it's, it's again, you know, if you bring us a deal. 
that is, you know, uh, pretty concrete and we see the value, things can be sped up in our side to, to make them happen as well. Right, yeah. right. I mean, uh, Rockefeller is a team of software engineers, so uh, getting these things done is, uh, from my experience, has been pretty pretty great, and uh, we, they have done a couple of custom solutions yep. for a joint customers. So, yeah, so if you have opportunities, if you have requirements, uh, again, uh, both my name and as well as my contact information, as well as guidance information, uh, is available here. Um, now, we have quite a bit of collaterals that uh, we also will be sending out, um, uh, including case studies as well as the application notes, data sheets about the joint solution. Uh, and um, this webinar is uh, recorded, and uh, the presentation will also be shared as well. Uh, so with that, uh, I'm going to pass over to Pamela to uh, help us to uh, close today's session. Thank you. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks to Thomas and Gagandy for a very engaging webinar today. On behalf of Netgear and our product marketing team, I would like to thank you for attending today's webinar on Wi-Fi monetization, how to make money with Wi-Fi. We invite you to attend the remaining webinars in the Netgear Sales and Technical Webinar Series. Tuesday, December 6th, will be on 10G Base T Copper Web Managed Switch for less than $100 per port. Wednesday, December 7th, our webinar will be on new high-performance NAS for small to medium businesses. We will also be selecting a winner of a Netgear black short sleeve polo shirt from today's attendees. So it does pay to attend these webinars. Finally, we want to make you all aware of a couple Netgear Q4 sales contests that are in effect through December 21st. The first one is for Netgear sales. The rep that sells the most Arlo will win a Netgear Arlo Smart Home Security Camera 4 Tech Kit, and the rep that sells the most ReadyNAS will win a ReadyNAS 212 Series Desktop. Our second Q4 sales contest is for the top three DMR partners selling Netgear product. They will win one of three great prizes, either a ReadyNAS 212 Series Desktop, a Nighthawk X10 Smart Wi-Fi router or an Arlo Smart Home Security Camera 4 Camera Kit. Thanks to everybody for attending today's webinar and have a terrific rest of your day.